Unveiling the eternal mysteries and hidden realities of the Word with Pastor Ditis Tashobia of Heaven Harvesters Ministry. Praise God. Somebody say, this is a year of believing God. Hallelujah. Say, this year, I believe God. This year, I am believing God. Money doesn't count. Jobs don't count. Friends don't count. I believe God. The next minutes are going to be so important for you. Amen. Your next 365 days are going to find a lot of shaping today. Praise God. Whether 65 or 66, whatever that is going to be. Praise God. It could be hard for me to have an order tonight, okay? But God showed me a lot of things about 2020. And I'm going to give you the prophecies, okay? I'm going to give you the prophecies. Are you able to hear them? God said to me, that this year is going to be a year of forgiveness. It's going to be a year of forgiveness. There's even people seated here. Um, I saw like chains of unforgiveness. Like this is something like feeling unforgiven. And they broke off. They broke off. I saw families i saw families that were having war war like you see war and some of this war is about some of you that are born again or being born again forgiveness forgiveness and the lord said that it's a coming together it's a coming together so like a coming together and these families came here and started to worship God. They submitted. Um, I saw somebody, your family is going to come here, 2020. It's going to serve God here. And yet it fought you. Yet it fought you. Yet it fought you. Forgiveness. Uh, watch closely. You hear a lot of forgiving, forgiving words, okay? Forgiving words in papers, okay? In papers in many places, eh? In many places, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. My interest is so much uh, in what we want to share here. It's too prophetic. Uh, as if better than certain things but it's okay hallelujah pray for me that i'm able to deliver i will i will isn't that true are you in verse 16 <laughs> I saw other weddings in this year. Quite a number of them. Praise God. I want to start with uh with uh I don't know whether to call them whether what I don't know. Uh, but uh, in me I feel like certain prophecies are are in this place, others are in this place, others are in that place, and but there are those I'm starting with, praise God. Okay, but um there are so many people uh, here that are going to have another level of very godly and God well blessed. And one day we were ministering and God told me, tell them not to be messed up by all this chaos that other people are into. Okay, You see, it's their time and their time is coming and I bless them. And then I give them amazing 
uh, spouses. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And something happened. Now listen very well. Whatever I said last year, the people that it befell uh, and probably are waiting in 2020 are not part of what I'm talking about right now. Are you understanding? Understand what I'm talking about. There are people I'm saying that God has touched and, and just blessed. And then there is a certain surprising wedding going to happen in 2020. It's going to surprise so very many of you. Praise God. It's going to surprise so very many of you. Uh, expect it. Praise God. Um, there's a brother here that I saw. I can even touch his name, okay? But I felt by the help of the Spirit, I shouldn't. God has the wisdom. Why? Uh, I saw him fly. I know that it's not an issue for very many of you. But what I'm talking about is a working of God. It's a powerful thing. Praise God. He was flying. And the businesses he was he's flying to, everything about it is a miracle. So I saw some people flying, okay, uh, to the United Kingdom. And I see them doing certain work. Praise God. That is very interesting. Praise God. So uh, some of you expect uh, blessings of God in some of those lines. Praise God. I'm having quite a number of people, you know, visa, what? Praise God. Yeah. Um, something happening uh, around there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, uh, you don't have to imagine what is that. Um, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, somewhere there. <laughs> you remember when, as we sang huh, and worshipped, okay? I entered the Holy of Holies, and then I entered through the blood of the Lamb. You saw that? Praise God. Entered through the blood of the Lamb. Everybody here has been cleaned. I saw a forgiveness, grace, rest, and there's a cleansing. There's a cleansing, you know? There's a cleansing. There's a cleansing by which every man got in. And God has put a forgiveness and healing and healing on so many broken wounds. Amen. Praise God. Okay, I think I'll finish these things. I don't know. I'll finish these things, then I give you the most prophetic thing, praise God, which is there, the word of God, that God gave us this year. I want you to pray for a certain president in Africa, praise God. As as traveling, I traveled, uh, pray, pray, and so, pray, and then pray. So I went and then it's here. Praise God. Like like this. Alright? Like this. And then like this. And then like this. And so as I go here, praise God. Can you see here? Praise God. You can see here? Praise God. Okay? So that's something like West Africa, right? Yeah, some something here. So he said, pray for him. Praise God. He said, pray for him. You can imagine how God cares about people. This, this guy, this thing should kill him. It's, he's, he's like dying in a disease. Praise God. And I began to pray for him. Amen. But I saw God say we pray for somebody there. Amen. There's somebody. Uh, it's important. I don't know why. But it's important for us to pray for a sickly Dying president, praise God. Amen. I saw it there. Hallelujah. Uh, there's something happening here, praise God. Something is happening here. Amen. It's in Somalia. Amen. Somalia. Somalia. Praise God. Somalia. 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 There's going to be a declared peace that has not happened in Somalia for a very long time has not happened in Somalia for a long time it was the power of the word of God praise God every time 
they announce it. Think about preaching there. Praise God. Praise God. They are doers. They are doers for the gospel. He's entering us there for a harvest. Praise God. <sighs> There's what I hear. We'll pray. But we we'll pray. Praise God. Amen. Are you praying for Samaria? Pray for Samaria, but expect uh, things right there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you feel like I've finished or something is still there? You felt I didn't finish, yeah? Yeah, I, I didn't finish. But there was something that we didn't finish. Uh, it may not make a lot of uh, difference to many of us. But yes, uh, it's one of those things that I saw. And I didn't understand what we needed to do as the church about it. Praise God. But then God said, I said already what should happen. Okay? So many of you are thinking about 2020. Hmm? Are you? Are you? Also in the politics? Even in the politics, isn't it? Even in the politics, you're imagining Bobby Wine, Seven E, what those things, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> if I can be blackboard here, I can write certain things. Yeah, I can write certain things. <sighs> what are some of you thinking? Like chaotic politics, they won't happen. Some like like calm politics, no, they won't happen. Confusion has happened in like the space of 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 campaigns has a certain dark thing like dark, like dark paint, dark, dark, with a small dim, dim, it's on some guy, his campaign has a small thing, dark on it. Then there is this outspoken, outspoken light, like something that is clear and seen. And M7 was there. Okay? M7 was there. And there's this guy. Uh, you want to know, right? Yeah. This is Bobby Wine. Praise God. This is Bobby Wine. Everybody is waiting for who hits who and they didn't cross paths they didn't cross paths and 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 when they didn't cross paths everybody was silent and the silence is hard to explain not to me to many people in the world everybody doesn't know what it means praise god amen Everyone doesn't know what it means. Uh, those of you who like politics, that's how you're going to end your 2020 politically. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Write it very, very well. Hold me accountable. Praise God. Hold me. Hold me accountable. But not for tonight, but what I remind, what I told you some time back, what God told us that is important for us, God said to us, Church, please, we have a responsibility to pray over the next leadership of this country. Praise God. Amen. Many people that were rising up in the claim of the same thing, I didn't see the hand of God on any, like I told you before. You remember? You remember? And the Lord told us to pray. But it was important for us to pray because if we didn't, it did not mean that nobody can go and take the lead. All right, but God needs us to pray for which person 
he should raise. Praise God. Amen. And there are so many things behind that that happen in this country that people don't know is the hand of God because certain people need to pray and somebody must raise. Praise God. You understood that sometime. Okay? Amen. Glory to Jesus. Who understands what Congress means? In as far as United States of America is concerned. Who knows what Congress means? I, I don't want to say things here people don't know. There are two hands only. Okay. So they will know what I'll, I'll say it for their sake. Okay. Follow very well. When impeachment stories go, you hear the first time, forgive me. I'm sorry. 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 In the Congress. Praise God. I saw that. Hallelujah. I want to preach. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many want to see 2020? How many want to see 2020? Let me ask you something. Are you here and you love heaven avistas? Are you here and you love heaven avistas? You're here? You're here? Hmm? Hmm? Praise God. Uh, all of you, individual prophecies are there in what I'm going to share. So many. Uh, are you ready for a more than double increase in numbers in the church? Are you ready for a more than double? I only asked a question you didn't answer. <laughs> Praise God. One came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? What shall I, what good thing shall I do? Have you been having that question? Have you been having that question? Something you should do to have eternal life? What is this here about? Pardon? Impossibilities becoming. Impossibilities becoming. Someone is asking, what shall I do that I should have eternal life? Have that. Have that. Have that. Have that. Have you heard by the ear of the Spirit? Right, right. I will not ask a question of what shall I do. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. Every time you are faced with a need to explain something, to understand something, to get stuff done in this year, don't ask, what shall I do? Have you heard? Have you heard? Don't ask. What do you do? Put the answer. Believe. Believe. What do you believe? That he shall do it. Amen. Okay, so look here. So the Bible says, And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing Shall I do that I may have eternal life? Next verse. The Bible says, And he said unto him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God. Okay? None good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. Note. If thou wilt enter into life. One. He says, Keep these commandments. Follow with me. He says, keep these commandments. 
keep these commandments somebody write down the next statement for yourself if you're hearing me please hear me say i have kept them all no 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 i don't think people are hearing me say i have kept them all write it down write it down i need you to enter 2020 with a spirit that understands there is nothing else you can do i want you to enter 2020 with an understanding that there is nothing else you can do praise god everything in your power to do has been done next verse the man said to him continuously he said unto him which said jesus thou shalt do no murder thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself what did the guy say the guy said then the young man said unto him all these things have I kept from my youth. Ask the question, what do I lack? That is the question you need answered 2020. He said, what do I lack? What do I lack? What do I lack? When we prayed, God said, Whatever they lacked, I did. What do I lack? The young man needed to understand. What is it that I lack? I want to spend some time there. Please give me attention. He want, began to wonder. For somebody who thinks I'm talking about, when I say that all these you have kept, I am not talking about thou shalt steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not bear false witness. I mean every effort that you have put in place to have yourself experience a certain life that you should experience praise god is that okay so jesus and the young man are interacting and he say what do i lack what do i lack this guy has an understanding in his spirit that he does not have an experience of a certain kind praise god he has a certain feeling he has an awareness that he lacks a certain experience when we say the impossible is becoming possible or is possible whatever has been impossible must become possible it is not the marriage that you want it is this a sudden experience ministered by marriage in your perspective that must be experienced that is not because the marriage won't come but that if the marriage comes or as the marriage comes the marriage you will get will not be the marriage of every other kind of person it will be the marriage that truly answers the question you have expected marriage to answer the bible is clear the bible says the expectation of the just shall not be put to shame it is wrong for a child of god to expect something and they get something different because our father asked a question shall a child say to their father that give me bread and the father shall give them stone shall a, a son say to their mother give me an egg and he shall give them a scorpion shall a child say to their or to its mother that please oh mother give me something to eat when he needs fish and he shall give them a snail he says shall he and he say if you have three parents which are evil know how to give you good gifts how much more shall your father which is in heaven give unto thee the holy spirit without measure when you ask have you ever had your believing life enter a phase that helps you understand that god has capacity in himself to deliver to his children expectation as desired even much more abundantly is rather than give them less than what they should expect so where did the kind of understanding and belief system come from that i should expect to have this amazing splendid life in my marital status and in my marital life and then when i get there i get what every other person calls trouble 
If my expectation, being a righteous man, is that I should have a great experience, when did it start that I can have a bad experience? When did it happen that I can expect to be happy when I get a job and when I got my job, I started to cry? When did it happen that I thought that when I get a friend, I am going to be relieved of my burdens and when I got my friend, trouble started? When did it start that when I thought when I get into university, I will have my life even more free and more fulfilling and when I got there, life became more imprisoning? The impossible. The guy stands in a world that makes him understand that I want an experience. The experience I want, I know, but I don't have it. I can tell when I get it. Give it to me, I'll tell you this is what I've been looking for. I will tell you this is what I've been looking for. I've been hungry for my youth. I've been desirous from my young age. I've been everywhere. But I've longed for something. I can feel it. I can touch it with my spirit. But I don't have it. He said unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You shall honor thy father and your mother. Praise God. Love thy neighbor as yourself. And the young man said, these ones I know. I did one, went to another, and went to the next, and went to the next, and went to the next. I went to the next until I finished all of them. What I want, I did not get it, but I know it. Tell me what I lack. Tell me, I need to know what I lack. Is it sowing seed? I did. Is it praying? I did. Is it loving people? I have. Do you want me faithful in ministry? I have. Do you want me available? The definition of it, I am. Hard working, I have been. Do I lack? And Jesus said to the young man, If thou shalt be perfect, praise God. If thou shalt be perfect, go I need you to pray that God opens your eyes and you pray the same prayer. Jesus said to the young man, Go sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. But come and follow me. If you have your Bible, underline, come and follow me. Every time you write anywhere this year, impossible is becoming possible. Write beneath it, lessons in believing. Write down beneath it what lessons in believing. Every impossible thing is happening because God is preceding it the grace to trust him. God told the young man, go sell all. Did he say some? When I was in the presence of God, God arrested me. This happened in the space between 24th of December and 27th, somewhere. And the Lord said to me, Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What did many of you think was happening when we said living seed? When we said living seed, what do you think was happening? It's a living seed. What do you think was happening? It's a living seed. It's a living seed. How many of you are able to lose 
all for him. How many are able to lose all for him? Believing God means a man can sell everything to death for the purpose of following him. To follow him, I will sell. To follow him, I will. Somebody asked the question. I am not sure if he's the one that I should follow him. The problem is not whether it is not him that you should follow. The problem is your wealth is too great that you can't sell it for what you're seeing. Jesus is not to so many precious enough to follow against their treasures. Look at what happened next. But when the young man heard that saying, the Bible says, he went away sorrowful for he had great. What was the reason for his going away sorrowful? His great possession. Oh my, no oh my. The Bible says he went away sorrowful when he had that saying. For he had great possession. Somebody said, I am not sure if the ground is fertile enough for me to sow in. I don't know if the ministry there is promising enough for me to serve in, to surrender my life, to serve in that ministry. I don't know if it's precious enough, if it's promising enough. It is not the promisingness of the ministry. It is the great possession you have. It is the great possession you have. Have you been there? And you don't know whether you should truly put in it all? You don't know whether you should truly, truly put it all in? Somebody didn't know if he should lose his sleep to pray. If, if I can know that prayer will answer, I will go and pray. But because I think, because I think I may wake up and pray, but in the morning I still walk on foot, I'd rather sleep. Hey, it's not that prayer won't get it answered. It's the beauty you attach to your sleep that is the problem. Oh, I'm not hearing you. Write it down. Lessons in believing. I don't know how many times you will write it tonight. Please write it as many times as you must. Say lessons in believing. Say my lessons in believing. I don't know if it is worth putting in my money. It is not its worthness and worthiness that is important. It is how much precious your money is to you. The young man went away sorrowful. The Bible says, for he had great How many want to believe God this year? I am asking a question. Who wants to believe God this year? Who wants to see impossible things becoming possible? Before I complete there, Ezekiel chapter 39, quickly. And you come back running. To Matthew. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried. Oh God. I find a lot of power in everything. I find in things of God. He say. This thing came and it was upon me. And it carried me out. In the spirit. Of the Lord. And set me down in the midst. There is power some is going to fall on somebody. You will see something here. From 2015, listen, I'm speaking. From 2015, somebody here, the year I can see you, the year 2015, somebody was entered in a valley of dry bones. Somebody here from 2015, you've been living in a life of crisis only. Funny and explained things. Your life has been different from 2015. 
a valley of dry bones. A valley of dry bones. A valley of dry bones. I don't know where you are. I can see somebody. You were made from, I can see the year 2015. Carried and then they sat in a place. And since then, it's been dry bones only. You're here. This is what is going. It was, God told me to tell you, it was his spirit. Receive it. It was his spirit. Whoever you are, it was his spirit that took you there. So he said, he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Eh, eh? Full of bones. Next verse. He said to me, and caused me to pass by them. Hey, hey, 2015, pass by them. 2016, and I saw another pass by them. 2017, he said there are others you didn't see. Come. Round about them. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were not only many, they were very. The dry bones were very. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Son of man. Next verse. 2018 came and he asked me a question. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? If you feel like standing up, I'm talking to you. If you feel like your seat is so uncomfortable, I'm talking to you. He said, son of man, can these dry bones live? And I answered, oh Lord God, thou there are things that I get to and I'm like, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Did, 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 did I get somebody here and they had a day and they said any witness you, and, and, and it was carried out of your mind and you did not want to think about it again and you placed it in who has done that? was done that with something. You're like, God, only you. <laughs> verse 4. And the Bible says that, and he said unto him, verse 4, listen, that again he said to me, prophesy to these bones, and said to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. All dry bones. All dry bones. All dry bones. All dry bones. He says, Son of man, prophesy to these dry bones and say unto them, All dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. First Timothy chapter 1. Verses 18. Listen. This charge I commit unto thee, O Timothy, according, somebody said to with me, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou might wage a good warfare. Prophesy, son of man, unto the dry bones, say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear ye now the word of the Lord. This charge I put unto thee, O ye my son Timothy. According to the prophecies which went ahead of thee, that by those prophecies, hey, 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 hey. 
if you are here and when you are young, you are a young girl, you got a gown, either a gown in your mind or you got a leaf or you got whatever and you walked on your wedding day and you prophesied yourself into marriage or somebody said to you, my daughter, I'll be happy to lead you on the aisle and you prophesied on that aisle and you walked in there and now you are beginning to say, oh God, thou knowest. I say unto thee, son of man, prophesy unto the dry bones. Say, oh ye dry bones, hear ye the word of God. I could never have been a young man. And I got a gun. I entered a bush of flowers. And I felt I was a great man. I kicked all the flowers down. And I told my mother that I was the greatest. That I'm a champion. And now everything in life comes to me. Threatens my soul. Puts me in a corner of slavery. And tells me that it is impossible. I come to say to you, young man, old man. Come on brother. Young man, son of man. Prophesy unto the dry bones. Say, oh yeah, dry bones. Hear ye now. I did not bring the great feeling in myself. It came. It was a voice of prophecy. I did not bring the feel of beauty on my figure. It came. It was a feel of prophecy. I did not make myself a bright girl when I went to school. It came to me. It was prophecy. I did not make myself the best of my father's children. It came. It was prophecy. I did not make myself beat my class. It came. It was prophecy. When I passed by that P7, it was a prophetic statement. When I passed by O level, it was a prophetic statement. When I passed by A level, it was a prophetic statement. When I completed my degree, it was a prophetic statement. I didn't overcome those battles. I didn't pass those rivers to die in this desert. I didn't overcome that river to die in this desert. I did not have the Red Sea part for me to die in this desert. Son of man, prophesy unto these dry bones. Say unto them, oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This church, I commit unto you. 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 Put your name. Timothy, Ditas, Alf, put your name, put your name, my son, put your name according to the prophecies that went before thee. Some of you like me, when you are going for your form one, your mother put you on a chair. She got your small suitcase. She looked at you in the eyes and told you, my son, I want a doctor in my house. Because she felt a doctor was the greatest thing ever. Some of you, they told you, I need a big house here. Some of you, they told you, my son, don't ashamed me. My daughter, bring me glory. My son, I can see greatness in you. They couldn't speak life out of you because they never saw light in you. They never spoke those things in you when they never saw a giant in you. If those prophecies went ahead of you, now I put this charge. Those old men and women prophesied. He said that by those things spoken, you may wage a good warfare. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. Get your pen and write it down. My lessons in believing. I am not hearing people say, 
This year I am believing God. That doubt by them might war ah, a good woman. I thought you were in Matthew 19. Please be there. Please be there. Matthew 19. By now we should be about 22. Hurry. The guy went away because of great possessions. I can hear you. Some of you I'm hearing you. Yes, that's faith. That's faith talking. Some of you I'm hearing you. You are saying it's not getting the money that makes me a giant in this story. It is that it will be written concerning me that I trusted God that counts. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're going to bed. When you're about to go to bed, God says, come and pray. And then a thought comes your way. Will things change when you pray? And then you say to it, it's not the change I want. It is that I trusted God that I want. And so I will go and pray because pray this time will mean that I have trusted God and deprived my bed of its possession. I am going to church not because I am getting the money, but because it will be written concerning me that when possession spoke, I said, I will deprive you of your strength. I will go to church because then shall it be known that I trusted God. Some of us, that is our war. Look. Verse 23 says, that is why nobody of that kind is here. And then Jesus said to his disciples, <laughs> somebody say I'm a disciple. Those that followed him, I say unto thee, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want you to learn something here and write again, lessons in believing. A heart that struggles to break down to the way of God is a heart that will hardly enter the kingdom of God. But that's not enough. Are you with me? I said that is not. I said that is not. I said that is not. What does Ezekiel say to us? 37. Look at it. You'll keep going all over. Back and forth. In every way. Again he said unto me. Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them. All ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Next verse. And the Bible says, thus says the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will. <laughs> uh, who said? Who said? Who said? I will cause breath. Oh. First run to Matthew, you will understand. 
Should I go there first? Yeah, go there first, then we'll go to look a bit. <laughs> Why the friend we have in Jesus? Oh, I see to be. Why the breathe? It's a privilege. Everything to come. Matthew 19. Let me surprise you. This is what God said to me. This is what God said to me. Are you ready for it? Look at it. Who said I will cause the breath? Who said I will cause the breath? Matthew. Matthew 19. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, Very I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Hey, the disciples, they are listening had too many possessions. <laughs> they had too many possessions. And as they spoke with Jesus, they felt like he was loving them and talking to them. And then they said to him, Hey! Next verse. When his disciples had it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? If the rich man like me cannot enter. Oh God. Who can be saved? And here comes. The word of the Lord to you. This year. 26. And Jesus smiled at their faces and said. But Jesus beheld them and said. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? What did he do? He beheld them. And he said, With men this is impossible. But with God all things are possible. What a friend I have in Jesus' world. I sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to care, to carry. I want you to look at message version of 26. Because I want to say something to you. Verse 26. Jesus looked hard at them and said, No chance at all if you think you can pull it off yourself. Every chance in the world if you trust, it, if you trust God to do it. You have every chance if you trust God to do it. This is what Jesus was speaking. Go to KJV again. This is what Jesus was saying. And this is where the mystery is. Do you remember what we are dealing with? We are dealing with issues of a man being told to sell all his possessions. Okay? Follow me, everybody. And then give it to the poor. Then come and follow Jesus. Okay? And then he's filled with sorrow. And he went away. Stupid. And then Jesus said, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Then they said, then who shall be saved? And then he said, with man, all things are possible. And are, are impossible. Which things? The issues of selling are hard 
with human effort. Matters of selling everything are hard. God digs deep in loving you to seeing how hard it is for you to pray. How hard it is for you to study the word. How hard it is for you to commit to ministry. How hard it is for you to love him. How hard it is for you to commit to his programs. And he says, with your effort, no chance. But if you trust me, this year, I am coming in to help those who want to pray and struggle to pray so that I will bless them. I am helping those who struggle to give, to make them give so that I will bless them. I will come in to help those who struggle to love, to love so that I may bless them. I am coming to those who struggle to serve me. I will make the dry bones lovely. I will make them serve me and then bless them. I am coming in to make the people struggling to help people fill the church, to make them get them in here and then bless them. With man it is impossible. With God all things are. When you think about yourself this year, don't think of what should I do that I may have. Look at, see, you say, look at what God is doing for me to have. Look. Come and look. Luke chapter 5. God has loved us. God has loved me. I am going to believe God this year. Somebody say it. I am going to believe God this year. Listen, believing God means that I have three alternatives. But I go for God. Praise God. Knowing he will make it happen. Then something needs to be solved. And there are so many ways to get it done. Praise God. And I say, I want God's way. I know all those are solutions. It's okay. Go have them for you who belong to them. I want the way of God. Luke chapter 5. Take us to verses 12. Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at verse 12. We go? Hmm. This is for somebody here. This is for some of you. And it came to pass. You remember where you're coming from? Remember where I come from? from eh? And it came to pass when he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face. The man is full of leprosy. He sees Jesus and he fell on his face like he bows down. He falls down and goes prostrate right to the ground and looks down. And besought him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, that is to say, if you will. Father, Jesus, Master, I ask if it's your pleasure. If it's okay with you. That's what somebody would say in this era. If it is okay with you, please, thou makest me clean. And we saw him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. The man did not question Jesus' ability to clean him. So many people here are so confident God can do a miracle 
in their life. Do you know that thing which you call a miracle? Do you know that thing which you call a miracle? You know it's different for all of us, right? But to some people here, it is that thing that can change everything. Okay, praise God. That one is a lot. There are some people here, literally people here, you find they don't doubt God's ability to get it done. But they don't know about his willingness to help. He said, God, I am sure you can make me clean. But is it what you want? Are you seeing his question? And it happened when, his, he, when he was in a certain city. That behold a man who was full of leprosy. saw Jesus. And he fell on his face. And implored him saying Lord. If you are willing. Is that simpler? While Jesus was in one of the towns. Uh -huh, good. Praise God. We have come down. Huh? We, we have come. Okay. And when Jesus was in Banda. Praise God. <laughs> now you're getting okay <laughs> when he was in one of the towns a man came along who was covered with leprosy when he saw Jesus he fell with his face to the ground again another simple one and began begging him Lord if you are willing you can make me clean there are so many people here they know God has power to give me this position. To give me this thing. But is he willing? Some of you, you've been taught from the day you were born that you pray. Just pray. Just pray. If it is the will of God, it will happen. I have an answer for you. And when you were 12, you waited for the will of God. You became 16, you waited for the will of God. You became 18 and 19, you waited for the will of God. You are 25, you're still waiting for the will of God. Another is 40, he's waiting for the will of God. And Jesus answered 13 KJV. The Bible says 13, and he put forth his hand. Ah. Oh. Even before he answered, he put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will. Look at the NKGV again. The Bible says, and then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am. Please get your answer. Get, 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 get your answer. Get your answer. Get your answer. He is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forever. The God who was willing for this man, the leper, is willing for you today. He's willing for your children tomorrow. He's going to will on the 1st of January. He's going to will on the 30th of January. He's going to will on the 1st of February. He's going to will on the 28th of February. He's going to will on the 1st of March. I said God is going to will on the 30th of March. He's going to will on the 15th of April. He's going to will on 1st of May. I see God willing on the 6th of June. He's willing 29th October. He's willing August the 1st. He's willing July the 2nd. He's willing September the 14th. He's willing December the 25th. He's willing November on your birthday. He's willing on your... <laughs> Say I believe. Say I believe. Say I believe. Say I believe. I haven't finished my sermon. Praise God. I haven't finished my sermon. <laughs>
Praise God. I haven't finished mine. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to the last small part and last phase of the sermon. So, give me the few minutes. Praise God. Give me the few minutes. Oh, my God. Oh, how could some people lose an opportunity to live in this year? How could somebody miss a chance? <laughs> Woo! These are the days that made Sarah excited. Some Hannahs here are going to laugh. Some Hannahs here are going to. Some Hannahs here are going to laugh. That is for sisters. Matthew nineteen. chapter Like this chapter this year. The last phase of it. Amen. Whenever you come to verse twenty six, sleep. Sleep there. Like sleep on it. Like the way he says, now that's your green pasture. So you do what? That's like a green pasture there. Come on, favors it Imprint it on your clothes. If they don't want to print it for you anywhere, print it for yourself. Like, let your children know that in the year 2020, I believed God. And the impossible. Have you ever seen this story that the fallen world put in place as the history of man, as the formation of man? You saw it? How they began from Epse and, and, and man evolved into something. Eh? Praise God. Hallelujah. Me, I don't want to mention certain things. You remember that thing, yeah? I want you to go. Huh? Look for a picture of the most dry bone. Praise God. The first picture, draw it when it's in the valley. Praise God. Then make another picture when it's standing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next picture, make the bone fly. Praise God. The next one, Make it form another bone next to it. Praise God. The next one, put some flesh on it. Hallelujah. Then the next one, put a guy standing. Hallelujah. Then finally, put a guy in a full combat. <laughs> Praise God. Put a guy a full combat and write down this bone leaves. And then right here, my believing lessons. Hallelujah. Then right here, impossible is possible. Put on your shirt and bounce. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to have things which will remind you. I want you to have things which will. Jesus said that with man it is impossible. With God. And that's where I want to start from this last phase. Ezekiel 37. Where we were at. Ezekiel 37. Praise God. Uh, in the vision, 
God brought the picture of uh, there's a man. Any people here who are familiar with Gulu? Gulu? Okay, it's called Gulu. Huh? Is that true? Gulu? Gulu, right? Gulu. Uh -huh. So, Okodoi doesn't know. Anybody familiar with Gulu? Okay. So, there's a certain guy coming from Gulu called Nabat Mao. You know that guy? Know him? Uh -huh. So, in the vision, he sat and he's uh, lost. Like, lost of opinion. Like, lost of his next step. He's confused. And he was confused. And suddenly, some other world leaders sat around him. And as they sat around him, they asked, what should we do? We don't have an answer. And then suddenly, they began to say to themselves that they have a way. Their way is correct. So they began to quote, quote scriptures. They began to say, um, the Bible says. So they wanted to consult the Bible for the way. And then suddenly, an error happened. And then I understood they were in mistakes everywhere. So as they wanted help, they knew probably the help is in the Bible. And so, he said, they were ignoring the children of light. And then, they made errors. And the scriptures which they struggled to explain showed them where the answers were. And we were the answers. Wait. Wait. And I wanted to know what the vision meant. Then God said to me, Nobat Mao represented every circular systems and their leadership. The church is the world. Everything on earth has entered an era and a season where they are beginning to accept the fall. Please watch me closely. If all of you watch closely from today, it's not a thing of this year. It's where it's a new. It's an. It's like what is going to happen between now and the end of time. You, but for now, when you see these signs, know what I'm talking about has come to pass. All of you begin to watch it. Please watch it, okay? You will see people, Muslims, non-Muslims, atheists, atheists, and everybody that is in forms of authority and leadership, you will see them trying to consult the Bible. watch please do what and people in this church have a problem you see god fulfilling his word and you keep quiet it's wrong it is wrong it shows unbelief you don't esteem the power of god it shows that you don't find beauty in god you don't prize what he does. Those are the most humbling things to any child of God. Every time you see confirmation of the word of God, it is a most humbling time. Are you hearing me? So, you're going to observe that from the Islam world, go to Al Jazeera, go to BBC, go to NC, go to CNN, go to parliaments, go to governments, go to news, go to programs. You are going to have politicians, secular leaders, trying to quote the scripture. Whenever you see it happen, know they lost the way of truth. And they have begun to look for it in the scriptures. 
God then showed me that he was a figure of secular authority and he said they were lost error in their quest and then losing the knowledge that we have the way eternal then they will inquire of us they will inquire of us and God took me to Matthew chapter 19 and the Lord said to me then Peter asked a question verses 27 we'll come back to Ezekiel Please, wherever you see these things, it may not be as necessary to write to me and tell me, eh, eh, what the things you are telling us. It may not be as necessary, praise God. When things happen in your life, it may not be as important to say, eh, eh, it may be of value, but not quite enough. Shout it to the world. Shout it to number two share with the brethren here that they will believe the God they had. Alright? Peter said unto him, look at it, those of you who didn't know disciples were rich. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. We have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? And God said, verse 28, I want you to see something there. Jesus said unto them, Assuredly I say unto you, that in the regeneration, do I have a regenerated spirit here? Do I have a regenerated spirit here? Eh -eh? If a man be in Christ, he is a regenerated spirit. The Bible says in 1 Peter, you are a new gene. He said, in, oh, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, he said, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And now do I prophesy? In this day, do you sit on the 12 thrones? How many know the 12 thrones? How many know the 12 thrones? There are 12 thrones of influence. There are 12 thrones of influence. <laughs> Choose the one you want. I want you to go and tell all your sisters and brothers who are in the entertainment industry, anywhere, anywhere. If you have somebody you know in the entertainment industry, tell them that come and go in church. It's where the next entertainment is going to be. It has changed. The lights have changed. Very soon, all secular artists will come together to put up the best show. The list in the kingdom will call for a meeting. You'll have bigger than them. If you are a sister and you have a voice, sing now. The most watched televisions are of them that follow him. Every person is looking for a school with the word Christ on it. Ezekiel 37. There's a word I'm waiting to say. Now I'm left with two scriptures and I finish. Not verses, but scriptures.
verse 5. We read verse 4. Again he said unto me, prophesy to these bones. And said to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, go to these bones. Surely I will cause breath to enter into you. And you shall live. Praise God. Verse 6. Look at it. I will put, I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Next verse. Hurry up. The Bible says, so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together. He used to like that song. John together, head the bone to the shoulder bone. John together, head the bone to the John together, God did it all. <laughs> Some religious people are looking at me singing. You, 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 you're supposed to travel the drive. You, you, you journey into the valley. Begin to see. Begin to see. Everything happening on the altar is spiritual. <laughs> That's how some of you are going to be dancing this year. You're going to be singing. <laughs> The same boardrooms they used to call you in to ask you why you're unserious. They'll call you again, and as you're thinking, they'll tell you. Don't take it up. God carries people and he paints on their hearts pictures concerning you. And Paul is telling Timothy that this charge I lay on you, I commit to you according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. That what? Come on somebody, that what? By what? What? The what? Which prophecies? Previously. That by what? What should you do? What is the charge? What is the charge? That you may wage a good warfare. How do you wage a good warfare? How do you do that? By the In other words, begin to understand who you are and know how to behave. One day, a certain man sat with me in a meeting and he said, I am losing you. I used to be with him on his team. He said, I'm losing you. I know you're talented. I know you're talented and I know. I know that I'm going to hear you in the newspapers. I know. I'm aware. I feel, I feel you shouldn't go, but I'm aware. As they come asking to know whether I ever knew you. The guy was telling me. Ha. 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 I feel like this is a year to remember every prophecy. 
I feel like this is a year to remember everything that has ever been proclaimed. If what is written in the word of God is true, do I have somebody ready to believe God? That by them you may wage the good warfare. Give me amplified. I want to teach you to war. This charge and admonition I commit in trust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance to with prophetic intimations which I formerly received concerning you so that you so that inspired and aided by them somebody say inspired come on say and aided in other words it means that if right now you are sleeping in a dirty house, you know that house which you clean, even if you clean it, it will be dirty. Because of its location, its formation, the materials that make it, even if you clean, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> How can you be, let me not add, <laughs> praise God. But you can, you can think of anything. Even if you're sleeping. But and then you remember. And then you remember. That one day. When your mother spoke stories with you. And told you you will live in a big. Paul says aided by them. Aided by them. Aided by them. He say you may wedge. Do you know what you begin to do? Instead of going back to that village and community and that suburb and that slum. To, 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 to quarrel with neighbors there. Every morning you wake up. When you don't have what to do. Go to Mutungo. Praise God. Praise God. Walk around. See your neighbors. And smile. See your neighbors and smile. When you fail, get on a taxi. Go to Entebbe. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go to Entebbe. You know that road? Eh? You branch down here. There's like Lyco here, a hotel, Lake Victoria. Then there's like a big gun here. Praise God. Then they have faces. Eh? Then you see up there. Then there's a house. You see your neighbor. And then you smile. Are you hearing me? He said, inspired by them, aided by them, you may wage the good warfare. This is how we fight, friends. This is how we fight. This is how we fight. He says, it's the good warfare. Next verse. 19. Praise God. KJV, praise God. KJV will come back to Amplified next. Holding faith and a good conscience that you may wage a, the good warfare, comma, holding faith, comma, and a good conscience, semicolon, which some having put away concerning faith have made sheep Rick. Shake your neighbor, tell them, war. If you don't war, you will. You will? You will? Listen, friends. The reason why when you started the last decade and you were 18, 19, some of you were 15. Okay. Fun enough, some were 10. 
it's not funny, but it's funny. Somewhere 10, praise God. You felt nice, big, special, rich. You had dreams. Did he? Did he? And now 10 years have ended. And you're feeling discouraged, unhappy, saying, will it be possible? Will it ever happen? It's honestly, if you look back, you did not war the good warfare. Which some having rejected concerning the faith. This is what? This charge I commend. What is this? KJV. All right. And a good conscience. Which some having put away concerning faith have made sheep. Some people, let me show you the error. Some people stand here. They hear prophecy or whoever says whatever. Do you know what they think or how this is how we behave? They be like, if it's God who has said it, it will happen. Oh. Oh. Then others, when they tell them, they say, if it's God's will, let it be. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. When we were young, we used to say, Chakutema Sirikamagata. <laughs> say the next decade the next decade I know how to walk every time you're walking around maybe around church or wherever and somebody says there you guy, you are a man of God. Get your paper. Run and write the prophecy. Because you need it to walk. We were one day on a camp on a camp at a campsite. And we were there's a man of God who had finished to minister to us and we're walking to it. And then this man of God um, met and was walking alongside us. And so some two brothers, a brother walked to another brother, but next to me and next to the man of God. And he said to him, man, hi, pastor. And the guy who they told hi, pastor, said, oh, man, leave me, me, I'm not a pastor. And the man of God asked him, hey, come, come, come back, wait. So are you saying your brother has the spirit of the devil? He said, no, no, no. Tell us, is your brother with the spirit of a devil? Mm -mm. Tell us, is your brother with the spirit of a devil? And the guy was like, mm -hmm. no, of course he is not. But you see, for me, when I, when I see how I live, I am that calling. Then the man of God said, go and eat pasta. <laughs> That's how some of you behave. If you want to continue living like that, every decade will pass. What will you hit? Shipwreck. Thank God you have met me at the start of this decade. Thank God you have met this insight at the start of this decade. Personally, there are things I remember and I'm like, ouch. Some of you go back to the village and sit. Congratulations. Hey. Fight. You know, why some of us refuse to go to the village? It's not because the villages are bad. Praise God. But we are fighting the good fight. 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 It's happening tomorrow. It's happening tonight. This evening it's happening. Tomorrow I'm meeting somebody. They are calling me in the morning. But it must happen. I saw it. It cannot die.
I thought you'd write it down and shout it. My lessons in believing. Every Sunday service should be like this. So that I preach and finish it. With your unbelief. And I preach in part. Need to preach a sermon and finish it. Because it saves your soul. Who is learning to war? Man, you can't, you can't keep making shipwrecks every day. You can't. You can't. He said, which some having rejected. Listen, you need to understand what was rejected by some. Hey, 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 hey. Have you seen what was rejected by some? No, 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 wait. Have some of you, oh, you're just excited shouting. Have you seen what was rejected by some? What was rejected? It's, it's a long journey. It's a long line. The prophecies once proclaimed, made concerning you by them. By them. It has to be by the prophecies. You might wage the good warfare. Comma. Holding faith. In other words, you keep believing that I am that great guy. I am living in the big house. You know, a few years back, there's a friend of mine, a brother, you know him. I've told you our stories with him. My brother Franklin. You know him, right? We used to sleep on one small bed. One small bed. And those days we would sleep on it to pray. It was good, praise God. Because a guy would push you and you get uncomfortable. You get off and begin to pray, praise God. And then after... And then after we would go out to win souls or to preach or to, to visit certain homes. Then we would enter some apartments with families to pray with them. Then when we go to pray in a certain apartment, we find a chair here and a chair here and a chair here and they are too squeezed. And then a big a table in the middle. They finish all the space. Then we come with like three people and then we fill up the house. And then we would get angry. <laughs> Who get angry at them would be like, how can you have a house and, and believers can't fit into a fellowship? Who would get angry at them? That was faith. We, we, would, we would know we can't be in a small house. Man, you, you're from one small bed. How can you have a right to have a man who has a sitting room and you're angry at them? Hey, I am not from a small bed. I, how, how did you... You, you wronged in the spirit to have a small living room. Didn't you know believers would meet? And so, and, and would come back and get angry and talk about these things and, and then say, I can't build that kind of house. Praise God. Now, you know, recently I got information he built and he's staying in his house and I took long without visiting him. So about last week, I think or so, I went with my wife and Angela and we visited him. We paid him a visit. At his house, praise God. I was like, man. I was like, man. I was like, man. I was like, man. Number one, the guy, by the wisdom of the spirit, he did something in his house. Just, just a light.
I said there is a guy who kept waging the good warfare. When he put up his foundation, his brother Emma called me and he told me, I said, Dita, I said, yes. Now you guys, you know me, I'm born again. Now you, some of you, you believe, some of the things you call believing and faith is foolish. I said, what's up? He said, you, you, you and I know Franklin, don't we? I said, yes, we do. You and I know how he's earning. I said, yes, we do. He said, the foundation he has put up. He said, he said, let us wait. Some of you know both of them, praise God. He said, he said he's, going to, he's going to fail that thing. It's, it's too big. The guy is enjoying a complete furnished. Praise God. Let me come and start building. Because I remembered the things we said. Now, I have not been waging the good warfare. Let me go and write it down. <laughs> Praise God. I need you guys to go back and write things you have heard. Either somebody ever threw it on you. Maybe somebody just made it. Some of it might have even been said by a, a drunkard. There are certain things which certain people say by virtue of office. Not because of, a, of anointing or because they have searched God. Are you hearing me? But because they held an office. Probably an office of an elder. You see that? And they were the elder available at that time. God had to put it in their hearts. There is a man of God I know. He left school and began to do ministry. He didn't have uh, school fees and all that. And he began to preach the gospel. Started up a church. And one day he's walking on the street from evangelism. And he met a drunkard guy. And the drunkard guy looked at him and said, My son, you see, you, I like what you're doing. You're preaching the gospel. Huh? I, I like it. But you see, my son, I am telling you, as your father, I know you're my son, but listen, if you go to school and finish, you will preach to the whole world. A drunkard, he told him, one week later, it hit his spirit. Hit his spirit. The man became uncomfortable. The man stood up. He pocketed. He said, he said, no. No, no, no. Something is happening here. He began to believe God. The next thing is he was in school. Praise God. He came to school. He caused revival. Praise God. He caused revival in school. It's from the same revival that I came from and I'm preaching to you. Praise God. The, the, the wisdom. Just think about it. A drunkard threw it in his spirit. God is my witness. God is my witness. God is my witness. The same man commissioned me into ministry. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? He has now preached in Nigeria. He has preached in Zambia. He has preached in Kenya. He has preached in Rwanda. He has preached in South Africa. He has preached in Burundi. Who would have ever? He is now a bishop of the whole region leading pastors. Who would have believed That a drunkard. It is not about who said it. That is why humility is key. That, that is why humility is key. You don't need, you don't need, some of you sit, you know, some people sit in church and then they say, me I will not listen to his words. Me I will not. Now you think I know that you're feeling like that seated there. You, you, you think I know you're feeling like that. I can't know. It is simple to submit yourself to these things. The Bible says, give yourself holy to them. Holy to them. To give yourself holy to them. And your profiting will appear to all. 
Instead of sitting here and you feel, ah, how about you dare to listen and receive? The drunkard put it on him. Now I want to teach you to war. I want you to go and remember things said on you. God is going to start, these 40 days, God is going to start bringing some of them back to record. Now, I want you to remember that wherever there has been shipwrecks, you've now known why. Alright? You've known because you sat back and you were like, if it's the, Lord, the Lord's will, let it be. If it's from God, it will happen. Some of you, we spoke the words, they've been there waiting for a watering. Never. You've never done anything. He said by those words you wore, the good warfare. One, holding, a, holding faith. Two, with a good conscience. That means there are things which will come and will make you feel like not believing that it is possible. He says stick to your profession. Say I know that I am a preacher and the deepest of them. Praise God. I know that I am deep. I know when I minister, <laughs> it just has to be deep. The deepest guys have to consult it. I know. But, 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 man of God. But you see, uh, 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 uh. good conscious brother, good conscious brother, I'm deep. Even tomorrow when I get on that pulpit, oh, shh. You must wage the good warfare. Listen, listen, church, listen, listen, friends. Listen, friends. We must believe. This is how we war in the spirit. We war by believing. Have you heard me? We war by. We war by. You insist and you believe. Remember, it is by them. If I felt it that day, it must happen. First raise up on your feet, I tell you we do something. I just want to first give us a, a few minutes. Amen. I want to first give us a few. A few. In these minutes, as you do the thing that you'll be doing, either by songs, or by prayer, or by speech, make sure that you are calling back the prophecies. Make sure you are calling back those prophecies. I want you to call them back. I want you to remember some of these things. And as you remember them, begin the good warfare today. And I already announced to all of us, today is our first day. I want us to sow 40 days. 40 days. I want us to sow a seed of 40 days. I want us to sow 40 days. The first precious days of the year. The first precious days of the year. I want you to sow them to the Spirit. You remember that thing in Galatians when the Lord says that he who sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap eternal life? You remember that? Have some of you ever learned how to sow 
to the spirit, you get things and you saw them in the spirit. It's our first day. There are some people here and God spoke to you and you participated or you want to participate in the living seed. I want you to sow it because you believe God. The purpose for that thing was to turn on the believing man in you. Praise God. It was to turn on to turn on the believing man in you. That is why the leader of service tonight told you that we are just doing a thanksgiving offering at the start when we were in 2019. And we want to sow seed into 2020. That sowing seed we're going to do in a few minutes and it will continue. Maybe throughout the year, I don't know. But I want you to sow seed because you believe. Believe these things, okay? Do what? B just believe these things. I want you to call back these prophecies. I want you to call back these prophecies. I want you to remember them. And I want you to begin to wage war. Wage a good war. Some people have known that waging war means I bind, I cut apart, I fire you, I bind you. No. No. No, 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 no. No. God never told us to war with demons. We don't war with demons. We fight a good fight. The good fight is to believe. Is to say that against all things, I'll believe the word of God. <laughs> As God said it, I'll believe it. You have been listening to Pastor Detis. For more of these, subscribe to our YouTube page, Heaven Harvesters Ministry, bringing all men into the kingdom of God.